Hey traders, how are you? Vladimir Bakov here from Traders Academy Club and welcome to the weekly Forex forecast for the week starting off 18 to the 23rd of November 2018. Well, I record this video uh, Friday night <laughs> so uh, because I, I will not be here during the weekend so I hope you have enough time during the weekend uh, to watch this video and get ready for the next trading uh, week. So, um, first of all, thank you very much, as always, for uh, the time you find to watch my video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, drop some feedback below. Feel free to share this video with anyone uh, in your own community who you believe this video can, could contribute to. It's totally free for the community. Uh, so, uh, before we begin to go over the technical views and uh, reviewing our previous forecast, a few important notes. First of all, um, as always, on Monday, I will be publishing the weekly forecast PDF format. So just come back to the video and in the comment section below or in the description below, uh, I will include a link to the PDF version. Okay, so again, for your comfort, so you, it's easier for you to follow the ideas. Uh, it's not a replacement of the video because in the video I explain everything detailed, but uh, the PDF could be helpful um, with reminding you <laughs> the directions and the ideas. Uh, second thing is, as always, if you watch this video for the first time, so first of all, welcome to our community, our trading family. Uh, on, the, uh, this, on the description below and on the comments below, you would find the invitation link to our totally free Telegram channel. This channel is for signals, for ideas, for setups, for strategies, articles, and a lot of great materials and in the educational mode, of course, basically all the things that I can give you uh, uh, to help you with your trading life. Completely free, so the link invitation is right below. Um, and the last thing is that Black Friday is coming and knocking on our door. Uh, the special offer that we have to all of my work, all of my projects that are currently available, including Jordan's Forex Delta and the Traders Academy Club, uh, this offer is on the table, the Black, special Black Friday offer. On the comments below, you would see the link with the Black Friday offer, so follow up. Uh, so let's begin. Uh, uh, what we are doing is, as always, we are uh, reviewing our previous week um, uh, ideas uh, to see what worked, what failed, what is relevant, what is irrelevant, and what should be updated, and we update it. So basically we do a follow-up uh, and uh, continuously following the work. So the first one was the euro dollar. We wanted to go and uh, make a sell. We wanted to achieve new uh, lows, and basically we got it during the week. No, we didn't have any significant retrace, but we did have here the drop uh, now, the expectations were towards 111, 110, as that's where the, uh, the weekly and the daily cycle combination and bought. And here is the very important thing to pay attention to. As I always say, when you find facts against your view, do not try to be a hero. Don't try to be smarter than the market. Listen to what the market says. When you see signs against you, and you know I'm a divergence and a cycle trader, when we see the weekly divergence developing and the daily divergence ticking up on the new low created, including a false break of this trend, and including a beautiful kicker pattern right here on the bottom, uh, and when we see the daily becomes a triple cycle with a bullish divergence, that's a sign that we need to make our money and cash out. As I always, always, always tell to my students, Never let a good winner, a strong winner, turn to be a loser. Listen to the market. Not always it follows and respect the levels. Sometimes there are random reactions. Sometimes the levels react faster than we would expect. And it's very important, very important uh, uh, for a trader, an investor, for long term, and it definitely for short term to listen to these changes. Once you recognize them, don't try to be smarter. Get out. There is always tomorrow. There is always second chance. There is always better chance when it comes to trading. And when your big winner turns to be just a winner, <laughs> make sure you don't lose that. Okay, very important. And the euro dollar did exactly that. The expectations were to 111, 110. We got a beautiful move down. 
that we were following for a couple of weeks ago. Previous week, our idea was to sell the rallies. We, we did not get any significant rally. We got small one and we got a continuation. And at that moment, right here, once we got a beautiful risk reward, the daily chart becomes a bullish divergence making this pattern. So in that situation, never ever fight the market, get out. So what happens now? The idea here is very simple. Weekly now suggests a false break and a bullish divergence. So daily is the one that should start a corrective cycle. Does that mean we cannot get any possibility of a deeper trace before the rally? Of course we could, but that currently means with the weekly bullish divergence and a daily bullish divergence ticking that the bulls are showing their interest. Will that be long term or short term? We don't know. So every drop that they will find, they will use that for a buy. So the way I see that uh, a daily cycle is triple with a bullish divergence, meaning we should get a corrective cycle at least. So that could become something like that, right? So in other words, four hour chart should be corrective cycle. That could be one and two, or that could simply go into the range. So something like that, right? And then it's in the range. For whatever it will be on the shorter view, we would be looking for buys. Now, will that turn to be four hour chart correction or daily correction? Now the weekly has the, the, the divergence daily should provide that corrective cycle. So daily is the one that also could make deeper correction here or also get inside a range for a while. Therefore, the euro dollar on the short term at currently for the short term becomes bullish and we are looking for buys, even if that means and that could happen that uh, the retrace would be a bit deeper to try and clear this area around 111, 110. That could happen, but the divergence there should be extended and the bulls should be using these drops opportunity to find their buys. So retraces down once they happen. Look for your bullish evidences, bullish divergence, false breaks, trendline breakout, turnarounds, higher highs, uh, all that turning uh, principles. Use them uh, and uh, to identify your next buy opportunities. The next pair on the list for us was the euro versus the pound. We wanted to see a new low and then a uh, uh, sorry, a drop down, not, not a new low, a drop down and then a rally. We did see the drop down. It was for a new low, uh, but it was a false break. And then we got the up that we expect. Now, here comes the problem. Why it is a problem? First of all, up is good, right? It is a corrective cycle. We were talking about it in the previous week that this is a triple cycle. We now should be experiencing a corrective cycle. Why it's bad? Because it's one straight lag that is reaching the 50% correction of this triple cycle. And this is where it becomes suspicious because corrective cycle should be in two waves or some format of range and it goes one straight leg. So what will happen here? As for now, for me, for this week, the Euro pound becomes neutral because that could be simply getting some ugly stuff like that before continuation or it could go through the 61.8, invalidate the bearish current cycle and start going slightly deeper again. So would we rush here? The answer is of course not. Uh, we should also remember that the weekly now holds this situation here. And this is also a bullish hidden divergence that now becomes relevant. Uh, with the daily confirmation. So we must be careful here. Therefore, the euro pound is at this moment becomes neutral. And the reason for that fundamentally, not technically speaking, technically I just explained, fundamentally is all the noise going around the Brexit. There will be too many speculations, too many rumors, too many random moves and reactions. That's not big money playing. That's simply speculation manipulation. Do not fall into that. Yes, the volatility is amazing. Yes, it provides amazing opportunities. Yes, theoretically, you can make a lot of money. But ask yourself this question. Take a look at the pound dollar. Would you really be able to do anything on such random reactions out of nowhere? Most of traders, the, for the majority of traders, the answer would be completely no. If you think you can, 
who am I to stop you, right? But the majority, the complete majority, falls in such traps and then finalize a final day of trading in a week or a day or a month, bad. Do you really want to find yourself there? I always say trade facts. Currently, in such situation, with all happening around the Brexit, there are no facts. Are rumors. Rumors are not good to trade. Yes, theoretically, they can make you money. Fact is most of the traders lose and lose big money on that. Next one on our list, Aussie versus the franc. Uh, so the idea was uh, to get uh, that into sell uh, for short term and for long term we are after buys. So we got it. Basically, this is the case, right? That was the place. Um, let's just erase it up again here. So we got this uh, first move, then a smaller trace. Here we go. One. Smaller trace and two. Then it became a bullish hidden divergence and basically making the further continuation. So what will happen here? I am still bullish for the long run. However, we do need to pay attention to the daily divergence developing here. This should be a fighting area. We should see some bearish reactions, which further on, I do believe it will continue. So in order to be able to trade that, uh, you need to go to the four hour chart, ask yourself what cycle you are dealing with. The answer here, we are dealing with a special cycle and the current leg is building a cycle by itself. This should become a critical area. We should be facing corrections, deeper corrections to provide the buy. So how do we the best of all provide this uh, um, sell opportunities? At the moment we get lower lows, ideally on the four hour chart. Uh, not ideally on the one hour chart. So if we get something like that and lower lows, then we can start talking about sell the rallies, right? Ideally four hour, one hour will make it much more aggressive because we're against the weekly. Um, so one hour chart will provide short term retraces, four hour chart will provide deeper retraces. Uh, so um, next one on the list for us is the pound versus the New Zealandian. Now our goal was and remains bearish, so we got that happening here. Where is that? That's our four hour chart and we were expecting that to continue lower and it does. What uh, do we have currently happening? Uh, weekly is our triple cycle and it is approaching dramatically through the weekly target. Now it doesn't have any stop signs. So technically the bearish continuation is on. Could we face some kind of retraces and corrections here? The answer is yes. But for that to happen, we need to start structuring false breaks. At the moment we get false breaks more than one uh, and higher highs, we can be talking about buy retraces and then further sells. If the false breaks do not happen, that's still sell opportunity. So that's for the pound versus the Kiwi. New Zealand in the long run, with this one I was totally wrong because I was expecting a sell plan uh, with a new high or uh, from previous week uh, levels. Now I was totally wrong here. We did have some kind of bearish reaction. It was a small one. Uh, we got a new high, but we never got any good retraces. Not lower lows, not trendline breakouts, no one. So my idea here basically is irrelevant. And what will happen at this moment? Here is where my suspicions uh, begin. The weekly starts to look like a possibility of a triple double, meaning a bullish hidden, a, a bullish uh, pattern with this divergence ending here uh, to make a continuation. Will that be this way or not? I'm still doubtful to be honest because currently the weekly does make a bearish hidden divergence, but the daily chart does not provide yet any stoppage of the divergence. So what could happen here is because we break the 161.8 level, which is right here, it's broken, right? So basically we can see that dancing around 261.8 and forming here some divergence. So on the short term, I think that it is still main, uh, remaining bullish. The 161.8 never was respected Next level is 261.8. The four hour chart should provide some stoppage around this zone, provide some kind of retraces and very likely some deeper 
uh, corrections. So my long-term sell opportunity that I was talking about and expecting to become becomes irrelevant, and it's time to adjust. Um, what is that? Euro versus the New Zealand. This one paid very beautiful because we were expecting that to reach this area on a daily chart. Uh, here, on this beautiful area, right? To we were expecting to reach that. We got that perfectly, and now we are we have the twenty candles ride on the Bollinger Bands, and it's time for a possible reversals. Now here is the thing, we do not have any reversal sign of ending divergence. Yes, we do have extreme divergence here, MACD and total new low, RSI is below 20. We could force some kind of retraces, but assuming that the weekly is bearish without any sign for a retrace and we have a convergence building up now, the correction should be small and short term. So what do we require here if we get a false break one or two and we start to get, sorry, not one, but two, and uh, we start to get here higher highs, we can start talking about possible short term retraces before further sells down. And that's for the euro versus the, the Kiwi first sign of our uh, plan works. Time to look for the next one. OZ versus the dollar, we wanted to go and look for the buys and we wanted two waves or a range. And here we are, voila, we got the ranging pattern and we should trade the lows inside the range. If the one hour chart can confirm this to be a cycle by itself, we are trading that. And the one hour chart was a pure sugar with a bullish divergence here, breakout, higher highs after that, as beautiful as we love, bullish hidden divergence for continuation. That's what we call sugar. So IMO, in my opinion, <laughs> we are continuing higher. Weekly is bullish, no changes so far, meaning daily should be corrective cycle. First leg on the daily was structured, we traded that, now it's the second one building up. Ideally, we are heading towards 50%, uh, not ideally to 38.2, which is 0.7440. Therefore, as long as this low hold, this is invalidation, right? We should expect that go uh, higher from here or slightly retraces and bullish continuation. By ideally, we're going towards 0.75 plus. So this one working beautiful for us. New Zealand in franc, our goal is buy for the long term right here. We wanted to see a range in correction uh, on the pair. We got it for some short time here uh, and then it continued. So my view remains pretty much the same. The daily now suggests a slowdown. Uh, no, it is not on the 161.8 any longer. Now it becomes 261.8. So the retraces are very likely to be short term but this level should be respected, some kind of retraces, and then further rallies, continuation. My plan remains the same. Short-term retraces, totally acceptable, tradable, but uh, long-term is bullish. How do we determine the short-term retraces? Basically very simple, lower lows. False breaks, lower lows. Next one was the dollar versus the franc. We wanted to see this after the little retrace going and continuing higher. The ideal scenario was towards the um, 102, 103. That was our plan, right? So the plan worked perfectly. It did not reach 102 though. And this is like the Euro dollar that I say, if you start to face signs against you on the time frame you trade or the higher time frame even, get that as a sign. And we got the divergences there every single where. Now, the one hour chart was two wave correction and broke up, but now it's making a new low. This is a beautiful uh, structure of a further deeper correction, which now is relevant. Previous week was bullish, now we are bearish. Daily made the corrective cycle, meaning, uh, sorry, daily made the bearish divergence, meaning we are after corrective cycle on the four hour chart. That could be one and two, or that could 
hold it inside a range for a while. And short term is sell the rallies for the dollar versus the franc. Next one was the pound franc and our plan was bearish sell the rallies. Now here is the thing, it worked amazingly by the book. Was that tradable? From my point of view, no, it was very risky. Due to all the uh, Brexit speculations and the things, such opportunities are very hard to catch. If you manage to have it, thumbs up. But you have to remember, that's where randomness come in. You see these reactions. That's not technical. That's pure speculations, rumors, whatever it is. All the possible noise. So yes, the plan followed. Is that tradable? Honestly, from my point of view, the answer is no. Yes, there were all the divergences and everything. That's why I was bearish in my mind. So if you manage to catch that, I'm very happy for you. Is that tradable or is that recommended right now? My answer is no. All the pound pairs pretty much. So I put, simply put X on it. The pound pairs are not technical at the moment. And of course you can find whatever you want, Elliott Wave, Supports, Fibonacci's, whatever you want. There is always a reason to make your expectations confirmed on the chart. There is always a reason to fight a setup. There is always a technical reason to fight a trade. But the truth is that currently the big money is out of that. Uncertainty is what controls right now around these pairs, which is logical. The Brexit is a serious subject. It's not will they hike or not hike on the next month, which is important, but temporary. This is a real deal. And that's why it's currently uncertain. I still remain bearish for the short term. No, I don't think this is smart to be traded. OZ versus the Kiwi. We wanted to see a new low and OZ versus the Kiwi provides that move that we were hmm, expecting. Here we are. So what do we have since? Now we have a break of this trend line. Is that a buy? Theoretically and technically, yes. But we never have higher highs yet. And here is my problem. So what do we have currently? 4-hour does have a divergence, but the, the daily is already in a relevant zone. These are signs i always careful about. So I do want to see higher highs, first of all, before we continue up. Because if not, there is a good chance we are heading slightly lower, lower towards the 161.8, which would be 105 or 104, maybe even lower before the next flight. That's a realistic possibility. So what do I want to see is something like that, a break above this high or a new false break and then higher highs, right? And then buy retraces or simply the structure of one, two, and breakout. Why? Because one, two is a structure of possible continuation. And if it will not happen and break down, then it makes it a break up as a new trend developer. And this is something to pay attention to for a possible retraces up. As long as the, uh, that did not happen, the fact that daily does not respect the 100 level and the retrace is so lazy could push that lower. Be careful. So yes, for the long term, I am looking to switch for buys. We need facts and we don't have that yet. So OZ versus the Kiwi possibly pushing lower uh, unless it make the reversal structure as I just explained. So the next one we have is the New Zealand in CAD. We wanted to see this uh, uh, making a high before it makes a, uh, some uh, possible uh, retrace. And uh, it was on critical level and it still is the 089090. It's still there, still fighting, still dancing. And as I said in the previous week, I do expect a fight here. And there is a fight. We start the divergence, we start to see the divergence. Now we start possible false break. So once again, at the moment we are turning down, it would be the retrace area. It could, of course, dance here a bit, a bit longer, but then make the retrace. I think at that moment, rallies should be considered as 
possible sell opportunities. Yes, for the short term, because for long term, it might still continue further. Sugar, we want to see the four hour chart, uh, two waves and breakout. Let's raise that on the chart. Here we are. Okay, so here we are with the four hour chart. We got the two waves, we got the breakout and we never got any continuation yet. So the basically this idea still relevant, failed for the first attempt. However, the daily is still bullish hidden divergence. Therefore, I am still after buys. Uh, the best thing after such thing is to let the false break happen. That could be here, that could be slightly deeper. Let the second trend line to be broken, make some higher highs and then go and attack that again. So the first attempt did not work out. The plan did not change, remains the same. Natural gas was bullish, remains bullish. And uh, as I said on the previous week, for me, it is still buy retraces. Now look what happens here. We reached almost five dramatical drop to below four bullish hidden divergence. And we are now already uh, uh, halfway up. It's volatile and it's paying big time. My view for the long term, still bullish. DAX, we wanted to be in the bearish view. Uh, here we are. I expected to see some push higher, never happened yet. Could still happen, would be a very realistic possibility. I am still bearish, sell the rallies. That could happen as a small retrace or it could happen slightly bigger retrace. For me, it's still sell the rallies. Nasdaq, we got a continuation after the previous week expectation uh, down. We got this continuation. Now we are facing here some slowdown, which means possible correction uh, higher. The idea here is still sell the rallies this way or slightly higher. We are after sell the rallies. Pound versus the Aussie. Our plan was to be bearish and to aim 170 ticks. Happily to say, this area was reached and paid. Therefore, right now, as I said before, for pound pairs, I leave it alone. I still expect that to continue lower. Uh, so if you are in or if you trade that already, good. New setups uh, are tricky. Euro versus the yen, I was bearish looking for sales. And it worked beautiful for some time here, then retrace and again a sell. And now it's in kind of a range, tricky, very, very tricky condition. So for me, that becomes a neutral. So as you can see, a lot of pairs become noisy. A lot of instruments become tricky, uh, not technical. A lot of random moves, a lot of, a lot of pairs are like that. So my focus would go this week on the franc, uh, on uh, the uh, euro dollar, Aussie dollar, and uh, the Pacifics, which I love. The basically commodities pairs. I think they are pretty interesting. Uh, no, I don't see, I don't find any new dramatic opportunities. Part of the game, such weeks are part of the game. Do not rush, let that happen. One pair I am following seriously is the cat versus the franc because if this becomes as a beautiful two wave with some kind of a hold here and then break the trend line yes i think this pair is about to fly but um, again i'm not quite sure the setup as for now yet so we need to wait a bit further so that's all uh, friends and uh, once again we have a lot of opportunities we don't really need 20 of them. We need two or three good ones and make them winners. And the best opportunities always come from synchronization. When you have synchronization or a rhyme in between the different time frames, when you have that in your hands, that's where your best chances are. When you start to go uh, uh, in lack of synchronization or uncertainty between the time frames, where every single time frame tells a different story, Normally, that's where the traps happen. So be careful. And that's all. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I hope to uh, uh, see your support back. Leave your feedback. Hit the like button. 
and uh, I invite you to my live trading rooms in a Traders Academy Club. The link to join us is right below. So what you get when you join, if you are not yet a member, is live trading room on every single day and trading report and setups, detailed trading report and setups, telling you the setups we are trading and the directions we are following on each of the instruments. So that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you a perfect weekend. Once again, thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Enjoy your weekend and your love people around you. Thanks. See you around. Bye.